Hello, my name is Bartek Hedroch and I'm a senior sales director of our products at Riskier. And with this presentation I would like to talk about the next logical attack. So many security um, features are already implemented in embedded devices. We see a lot of implementation of secure boot. We see secure coding like over the air updates as you see for example with automotive. We see encrypted data. Um, we see authentication mechanisms on different interfaces that are used. We see communication, secure communication, internally and externally. There are, from a cybersecurity point of view, firewalls implemented, intrusion detection systems, even policies are, are, are used, or eventually also temper detection and reaction mechanisms, for example, counters, or if something is triggered, something is wiped. So in general, this is good. So this is good practice, I would say. Um, but what is the next logical attack? We see that uh, the number one threat of uh, secure embedded systems is logical attacks. Um, therefore, many developers focus on implementation of countermeasures, as we just saw before. We see secure coding standards being implemented, like uh, CWE or MISRA-C. We see tools being used, static, dynamic code analysis tools. Maybe things code is sent to a manual source code review to a third party. Or we see things like fuzzing. So, but when software gets hardened, so when all these measures are into place, what will attackers do? So, maybe hardware attacks will become an interesting option to explore. And that's why we say the next logical attack is fault injection. So the concept of fault injection is through an external disturbance, like voltage, EM or power, you change the internal state of a system through voltages, current and charges, which have effect on the data and operations. In other words, through an external disturbance we manipulate the logic. So that's why we say fault injection is a physical attack on the logic. So the threat of fault injection is that you can introduce logical attacks, like uh, buffer overflows. You can, with one fault, dump a firmware, bypass a secure boot, or maybe even get the key out. Um, we say every unprotected IC is vulnerable to fault injection attacks. And fault injection is actually easier than another hardware attack, side channel analysis. And also the attack surface is much bigger than just side channel analysis focusing on only encryption. So the real threat is low-end tools. We see chip whisperers being available to hackers and hobbyists. And here are some examples like attacking a PlayStation Vita or a Trust Zone or even the Nintendo Switch using a chip whisperer. But these attacks are not new. Already 10 years ago people were glitching like other gaming consoles to gain free gaming or to gain free access to the system. For example, here you see an Xbox 360 glitch chip. Recently we've also been publishing about fault injection more, for example in automotive, to show that safety is something else than security. Um, we also showed already on Black Hat in 2016 about bypassing secure boot on a Linux operating system. And recently also looking at crypto wallets where people rely on a cryptocurrency and a wallet to store your you know, valuable bitcoins, but how secure are they actually? So we see many standards already implementing fault injection, like smart cards. Already for more than 20 years smart cards mandate that there are certain side channel and fault injection countermeasures against power, EM, single laser, but even double laser. We see also the content protection market that is very keen on fault injection countermeasures against glitching of the secure boot. In payment terminals, we see under PCI PTS that there's tests against non-invasive fault injection attacks. There are other standards, like already mentioned automotive. They also mention fault injection. Unfortunately, that standard focuses on safety, not security. So that's why we, we say safety is not security. 
Luckily we have also MITRE that recently published a new, ver new version of their Common Weaknesses Enumerator CWE uh, where they say that not having fault injection countermeasures is considered as a hardware design weakness. So check out cwe.mitre.org to see all the hardware design weaknesses that you can implement. So there are some different perceptions of fault injection. Fi it is finding a needle in a haystack. Yes, it is an exhaustive search, but it, with the right tools, with the right mindset, it's not that, e not that difficult. It's very expensive. Depends on what kind of tools you want. You want professional tools that cost money, um, but they also do the job right. But there are very simple, inexpensive solutions like Chip Whisperer that, that already help you test products. So it's not very expensive. It's time consuming. Doesn't have to be. Um, with a lot of automation in the tooling, you can have uh, the computer do the work for you. It's hard to reproduce. No, if you find that needle, then it's actually very easy to reproduce the attack. You need hardware to protect yourself. Not really. In some cases, yes. For example, it's nice with a laser attack to have a light detector. But many things can be solved in software. So a lot of things... It's, it's all about how you code. Luck. Yes, luck is something you would like to have. So sometimes you can be lucky that in five seconds you find a vulnerability. And sometimes you're unlucky that it takes a bit longer. So we are experts in fault injection. For more than 15 years we've been working on the fault injection problem testing many devices. So that's why we are experts in fault injection. And if we look at fault injection, it can be detected and mitigated in already different stages of the product development. So already in the specification and the design phase, you can do source code testing. So you can test against fault injection vulnerabilities or even simulate fault injection um, in the software. We also have pre-silicon validation tools. So you can test your RTL code to see if there's fault injection vulnerabilities. One important thing is uh, awareness. So FI training already starting in an early phase can increase your uh, uh, mitigation level. Another way of testing is sending it to an expert where we can assess your design or we can do a pre-certification. Typically people test at the later stage. So in silicon, when something is already made, we test power, EM and laser. You cannot replace simulation, so you always have to test at the end. For some parties, if they want to do um, get into a market, they need to have a certification. Do they need to go to a third party lab that can do the testing and can write a report for you? So typically we say, and I think in many cases, is the earlier you find the fault, the lower the cost impact. So if you find a vulnerability and you have to do a new tape out in silicon, that is very costly. So the earlier you start with mitigation, awareness, the better. So how do you protect yourself against fault injection? Typically I look at this loop developed by John Boyd, um, observe, orient, decide, act loop. I also call it sense, react, act. So sense. First we need to have a sense of awareness. So is fault injection a problem for my system? How what are my assets? What am I protecting? So that's number one step. So is fault injection a problem? Second, test. So, re, so uh, react. So we want to react. Um, so we test against the certain state of our protection. So uh, in software and hardware. Then we implement a countermeasure. So react. So we act something against the test that we have done. And this is a loop that you get in. So the sense react act loop, you re-loop over and over between testing and implementation until you find your right mitigation level. So we're starting a fault injection campaign. On one side we want to advocate, we want to help you to get more awareness of fault injection and to let you understand if fault injection is a problem for you. And we want to educate you, you educate you how you can mitigate by testing by implementing certain countermeasures against fault injection threats. We do this through our campaign. We call it We Love FI. 
there doesn't stand for we love Finland. We like Finland, we love Finland, but this stands for we love fault injection. And one way to do that, we have an online fault injection workshop, or we also call it the fault injection crash course. So this workshop will have various topics like risk introduction, side channel fault injection introduction. We'll talk about fault injection fundamentals. We talk about our tool inspector and true code. We talk about techniques like emission microscopy, deep learning in side channels. And um, we'll also talk about different countermeasures that you can implement in software. So we have various speakers, our CEO and founder of Riskio, Mike Witteman. We have Rafael Boyskarpi, who is our principal trainer. Erwin, our product manager for products, and me will talk about our tooling. We already have more than five hours of content and more will follow. And the first content will be live on May 12th this year. So afterwards, if you have any questions, you can go to our public Q&A on May 19th. We'll start in Pacific time. So on the West Coast in the US, we have a two hour session on May 19th. We can also, or you can also book private Q&A sessions through an online tool that will be available on our website. You can always email us with questions that we can handle during the public Q&A sessions or in your private session. And you can always go to our website. So we have a website, risky.com slash news slash fault injection crash course, or simply go to welove.fi and then get the redirected to our online workshop. So we are Risker, we are specialized in fault injection and logical, physical and side channel security evaluations, tooling and embedded systems. And we already do this for more than 20 years. So see you soon at our workshop. Thank you.